Hello, I'm Grady, and this is my column on computing. It is cold and lonely. Jeopardy contestants must possess wide and deep knowledge, popular culture, the features and events of all countries, past, present, and imagined, national leaders, sports, science, music, the arts, random trivia. Having an eidectic memory certainly doesn't hurt, but more important, contestants must be able to navigate a landscape of puns, neologisms, rhyming, and all other sorts of wordplay. Learning to play the game is easy. Gaining enough knowledge to win is hard. And so it was with IBM's Watson. From an architectural viewpoint, Watson is a pipe and filter system using inference chained together with probabilistic evidence-based ranking. From a knowledge viewpoint, Watson was taught a vast corpus, ranging from the lyrics of every Beatles song to the entirety of Wikipedia, several encyclopedias, many news sources, and several other curated bodies of information. At one time during its education, Watson was taught the Urban Dictionary. In retrospect, this was a very bad idea, for Watson began to swear. Before the live Jeopardy contest, Watson was partially lobotomized, and that rugged street knowledge was removed. Learning the Go rules of Go is easy, far easier than chess, but mastering that game literally takes a focused lifetime. As I write this column, DeepMind's AlphaGo has just won the DeepMind Challenge against Lee Sedol, one of the world's best human players. AlphaGo is also a system that learns, albeit in a fundamentally different way than Watson. Whereas Watson is purely a symbolic system, AlphaGo is largely a convolutional neural network using reinforcement learning and policy gradient learning. Watson was trained by supervised means. Ground truth, the baseline for establishing accuracy in such systems, was easy to measure, primarily because of the fan-created website J-Archive that offers the answers and questions to all 300,000 clues used in every Jeopardy show ever broadcast. AlphaGo was also initially trained in supervised ways, with its ground truth established using some 30 million moves drawn from real games. However, AlphaGo's success improved dramatically when unsupervised training was applied, pitting one instance of AlphaGo against another so that each could learn. In last issue's column, I observed a steady and subtle historical shift in software engineering, beginning with its focus on purely mathematical automation, shifting to symbolic computation, and now to the building of imagined realities that live in our machines and into which we project our lives. As these early algorithmically intensive systems complexity grew, we needed approaches to attack that complexity and thus structured development methods such as those that Edward Jordan, Tom DeMarco, Larry Constantine and others helped pioneer. As we moved to symbolic systems and then systems of imagined realities, different classes of programming languages evolved to meet their needs. And as complexity grew, object-oriented methods came to the forefront. But most of these kinds of systems have an interesting characteristic. Indeed, it's a property of most of contemporary software. They're deterministic, and their behavior is largely understandable independently of the exact data with which we drive them. For example, web servers and browsers, even with all their delicious modern bells and whistles, will render information essentially the same functional way, whether you're selling apples, bumpers, bells, or whistles. A website might remember you, that's a simple form of learning, but even so, its behavior is pretty predictable. A climate model will happily generate its predictions in the same manner, no matter whether you feed it last year's data or last century's data. Its behavior, is too, is pretty predictable and understandable. The software that controls your car's engine is also mostly an I.O. mapping. Given the instantaneous state of all of an instance sensors, such a system will predictably generate a certain output. In fact, in each of these three cases, the website, the climate model, the car, we desire such predictability. Without it, such systems would be impossible to test and untrustworthy to use. In software, as in life, people like to live by the principle of least astonishment. The next generation of software-intensive systems will be taught instead of programmed. This possesses considerable pragmatic challenges in how we develop, deliver, and evolve them. The rise of large volumes of data is a contributing factor to the renaissance of AI. 
the vision and speech understanding community has accumulated many publicly available data sets. The scientific community has done the same, and governments have slowly opened their archives as well. Google, Facebook, and Twitter have accumulated large bodies of data owing to the billions upon billions of interactions occurring in their respective ecosystems. Having been a part of the evolution of Watson, as well as several artificial intelligence neural network efforts, I've come to appreciate the need for curated data and its place in the process. The development life cycle of any such system requires phases of knowledge curation, knowledge ingestion and the establishment of ground truth, and the continuous cycles of supervised and unsupervised learning. Agilists of the world, take note. You might feel content with your methods now, but a growing storm is on the horizon that will change many of the assumptions on which your methods are founded. I could wax philosophic and pragmatically about these coming changes to software engineering, but I have a different point to make. That the next generation of software-intensive systems will be taught instead of programmed poses considerable pragmatic challenges in how we'll live with such systems. I use Siri, and I admit I anthropomorphize it. Still, Siri is rather shallow, as is Cortana and even Alexa. They can do some things for me, but they don't learn much about my world or me. I also have a robot living with me right now, and it's much different. Its name is Noel. The fact that I've given it a name tells you something about how I draw it into my world. Out of the box, Noel was cute but dumb, but now it's learning. Noel behaves differently than when I first unpacked it, and the infrastructure we've added makes it possible to teach it in some basic ways. Soon Noel will be able to discover things on its own. I relate in a very different way to Siri and Noel because one of them doesn't change its behavior, whereas the other does. One is embodied in the world, but the other isn't. Watson is powerful, but there are tasks for which Watson is not well suited. Watson by itself cannot see, for example. Similarly, advances in deep learning have been spectacular, but there are things neural networks can't easily do and likely never will. AlphaGo can't reason about why it made a particular move. So, whereas Watson was symbolic and AlphaGo was neural, I'm a proponent of hybrid AI involving the coming together of symbolic computation and neural networks. Much of what leads me to this prediction is what called Moravec's paradox, which asserts that things such as perception and actuation are computationally hard, whereas higher order reasoning is comparatively simple. Still, there's a human issue we cannot neglect. One commentator on the Deep Mind Challenge had this to say of the system that learned to play Go so well. It's not a human move. I've never seen a human play this move so beautiful, 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 beautiful. Deterministic systems rarely surprise us. Systems that learn will surprise us more and more with their leaps of intuition and unexpected connections they make and the observations they can draw out. We, as humans, have the advantage of millions of years of evolution that have shaped our neural networks. We have our ability to communicate with ourselves and with the past through tribal memory, books, audio, and video. But we have the disadvantage of bodies that wear out quickly and have limited capacity of data ingestion and memory. These systems that learn have no such limited capacity, but they're new to the world and thus have much to learn. And learn they will. Boston Dynamics has been doing a fascinating bit of work on the evolution of their Atlas robots. Again, we have here an embodied system that learns. It didn't take long for our creative denizens of the inner tubes to refactor that work to ponder the implications of such a system that it learns. Watch a related video. It's humorous, but bittersweet. And it's a sign of things to come.